Hi, this is Tom Triums with the FujiNet Project. And I wanted to make a step two video basically showing how now that we've got the development environment set up, now we can start adding on some additional tools such as graphics tools that we'll use in later parts. It's pretty straightforward. So without any, uh, without any further ado, let's get started. So this is the system as we last left it here. Uh, we can, of course, take and clean this up a little bit. Uh, we know we're not going to use the mail client, so we can unpin that from our favorites here. If you want to keep help here, you can do that or you can unpin it. But we've got our terminal, we have our text editor, and we need to start adding some bits and, some bits and pieces for graphics. A great editor, uh, basically Photoshop-like program for Linux, is called GIMP. And the best way to install this, you might be tempted to use the software, uh, the add software uh, feature that's in Ubuntu. I do not recommend using this at all because it uses a very inefficient way of installing software. It's absolutely horrible. It's very slow. It just doesn't work very well. Doing this from the command line is extremely efficient and the program start up faster. So let's use, let's do that. We'll use the term sudo to basically say we're going to start up as super user because we need to do these commands as super user. We're going to use the command apt and we're going to install GIMP. I need to provide the root password that I provided for the system. Once we do that, yep, it's telling us uh, what packages will be installed and what's you know, recommended, etc., and all this other stuff. Okay, great. Bam, we're good. We take and install GIMP. A few moments later, GIMP is installed, and we'll see how everything shakes out right here. Boom. GIMP is now installed, and we can go to the Applications menu here, and we can see that GIMP is now part of our installation. The little GIMP character with this paintbrush here. We're gonna right click and then we're gonna take and add that to favorites. Sure, no problem. And once we do that, we can start it up. <clears throat> and it did that back behind here, okay. <laughs> it let us know that it did that back behind with that pop-up but we have ourselves a nice little Photoshop program that we can basically take and start scribbling down uh, canvases and things, and we can draw on it and do all sorts of interesting things. It's all here, our illustration program with all sorts of features. Spend some time to get to know this pretty well. There's lots of excellent documentation and uh, there's user manuals and all sorts of things to show you how to use basic features of the program, as well as links to the online site to give you all sorts of tutorials for all sorts of image processing techniques. So with that, we'll take and close this out. No, I don't want to save it. Discard changes. GIMP is now installed. Okay, that moves us on to uh, another piece of software that we really need, which is called Magellan. Magellan is what's called a map editor. Since the VDP used in the Atom is built up with tiles, it really helps to have a piece of software that can modify those, that, that can build up those tile maps and to build up the character sets used by those tile maps. For this, we can go binary distributions and we can literally pick up a copy of Magellan for Linux here. Boom, okay. We can take it, immediately unpack it. And once we do that, we can take this and we can move that out into the home folder. But we also, since this is a Java application, you can see it right there, uh, we need to install the uh, OpenJDK. So we open up a terminal, sudo again, apt install OpenJDK 8JDK. Enter my password again, go ahead and let the JDK install itself.
Now at this point, if I run Magellan, say run as right click and run as program, we'll see the Magellan editor start up here. But we can improve on this quite a bit. We're going to do a little bit more desktop integration with the same techniques that we did to get uh, Colem integrated into the desktop. So we break out our file window. We open up, uh, we go to hidden files again. We go to local, we go to share to applications, and we open up colon desktop and we'll use this as a template. And we will call this, uh, first of all, it's in the Magellan folder as Magellan. That's the name of the program that's being executed. Of course, it's called Magellan. And the name of the icon that we're gonna put into place is Magellan. And it will, we are gonna make another MIME type in here in a moment, just for the special documents that it creates, which are .mag files. Okay, let's go ahead and save as. And we'll put ourselves back here local, share, applications, and again, Magellan.desktop. Okay, when discard changes reload, okay, great. So now that's in place. Now we just need to take and put a, 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 a an icon in place. Well, if you went, remember the where we were, back at Magellan, that looks like a nice icon, don't you think? We could take and pull that. Let's copy that. Let's put that in the icons folder. Boom. Okay, bam. There it is. We rename it to the same lowercase Magellan that we put. Because icon equals lowercase Magellan, like we put there. And this should be the first part of that integration. Now, when we look, we see Magellan right there. We can go ahead and add that to favorites. Just go ahead. And when we launch it, bounces right into Magellan. Okay, last little bit of here. We'll go ahead and take this a step further and add a MIME type for the MAG files. So we go ahead and go into uh, same place as before local share this is a mime type so we go into mime into packages and we'll open up one of these as a template go ahead and close magellan desktop because we don't need it anymore and we'll modify this guy to be as a template here it's much the same thing application xmag because that's what we specified in the desktop file dot mag for the files we're looking for and again, when we get icon sorted out, that's the icon name. So let's go ahead and save as. We'll go ahead and local share, scroll down. In fact, I'll make this window a bit bigger going forward. Mime, packages, application, xmag.xml, bam. Okay. In fact, I'll make one more adjustment here. I forgot to call this. It's a Magellan map file. We'll save that again. Application xmag. And now we need to open a terminal here. Go back a little bit. Update MIME database. Local. Here, mine. And now we have integration into Magellan here. So with that, I should be able to go into now, uh, go into examples and open up the brockrun.mag, for example. Ah, we need to update the uh, application database. We'll go ahead and do that. Up the update desktop database. Uh, sure, there we go. Let's see how this turns out. And there we go. And actually, I think we need to just 
it's weird. If I open it like that, that happens. Let me go see if this will, let me see if this will work here. Bam, bam. No, it's in the wrong format. Wow. Bitmap color mode. Let's take and open that again. Let's see what happens. There we go. So there you see, this becomes a very effective way to take and open up screen data information. You can modify individual sprites very quickly, very effectively, and you can dump them out into binary format, assembler data, whatever, however you want to do this so that you can take and incorporate them into your own programs. So now we have a drawing program right here in GIMP. We have a tile editor here in Magellan, but now we need to add a third program to this mix. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and add Convert9918. Convert9918 is a wonderful piece of software written by Tosion, which converts bitmap images, like what you get out of GIMP, into something that can be displayed on the 9918. So to do this, we'll go ahead and just grab the, uh, we'll go ahead and just grab this. Let me see, actually, I wonder if I can just cut right to the chase, because the only thing I'm really interested in is this convert9918 zip file. Sure, we can grab that, say raw, and it should grab it for us. Yep, there it is. Open it up, there it is, extract it. There it is, ready to go. So now I can take and copy that, put that into our home folder here. Now we can't run this as it is. It thinks it's an archive file for some reason, for like it's like a self-extracting archive, whatever. So we really need to do, we need to add an additional piece of software uh, so that we can run Windows applications under Linux. And for that, we'll use Wine. Wine is easy enough and the best way to install it is on this site right here. Oddly enough, call htmlvalidator.com. Go figure. And you can follow these instructions right here. This just lets you lets you verify that you have the that architecture available. We already know it's there, so all we really need to do is this command right here. And I'll put this to the side so I can so I don't have to trample over it. Then I need to import the, create the key rings directory. Grab the WineHQ key. Then take and grab the sources file for wine here. Do an update from APT so that everything is in sync and it gets all the package information we just added. Hmm. It's fine. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And valid for another four minutes and 26 seconds. Huh, okay. I wonder if I need to go ahead and run NTP date. My clock, my virtual machine clock seems a little off here. I'll go ahead and just do that. Okay. So I guess su suspending and re and repending here our clock uh, has had some interesting effects here. Don't mind that this was something I needed to do because I'm running in a virtual machine and I'm constantly suspending and re-snapshotting it. Okay, let's try that again. So we will do at update, try again. Okay, and then we can actually install WineHQ. I'm going to use, instead of WineHQ stable, I'm going to use WineHQ Devel, the latest version of Wine. And then you see, as you can see, it's installing a whole bunch of packages. 
But this is basically a complete Windows emulation layer so that you can run Windows applications inside Linux. Well, which Windows applications are we talking about? At this point, I can safely say most of them will work, and especially the ones that we need for our development purposes will work in this case. So we'll take and grab it here. I'll take and pause for a second while this thing does its little fetch here. Okay. <laughs> it needed a little lunch break there. So now it's installing all those packages it just downloaded. Paused it for a minute there, we're almost done. A lot of packages to install. And now Wine is installed. Now we can run Wine config and get it set up. Let it install what it needs to install. And once the configuration window comes up, we can basically just accept the defaults as they are. We don't need to do anything. We can just hit OK. Boom. At that point, uh, we can then take and use Wine to run Convert 9918. And there we see there's our, uh, there's our 9918 window here, and it works really well. But again, like before, let's take and do a little bit of integration so that this starts up quite nicely. We'll go ahead and close this for now. And we'll start by grabbing an icon. Well, this program doesn't really have an icon. And Tercy's icon on Twitter looks like a lion. So let's look for a lion character. Yeah, that looks pretty good. OK. Copy that image. Go into files here again, local, share, icons, paste it here. And again, we'll just rename it to uh, convert9918.ping. Here we go. Bam. We are good. So there's our icon. Now we just need to make a uh, particular little application desktop file like we have for everything else. We we'll use colon as our as our temp template once again. And this time, since it's a wine application, we need to put wine in front of it. Uh, this is called convert ninety nine eighteen. The icon is lowercase convert ninety nine eighteen, like we specified before, and uh, this program works best with ping files. So I'm going to say the mime type is image.ping so that we can associate files to it. Sure. There we go. Bam. At that point, we can save as. Go all the way back to applications. And. Save it out. Boom. There we go. So discard and reload. Bam. So there we go. There we go. And if everything, if we've done our job for it, we should have convert 9918. Let's take and pin that to our favorites. Get it ready to run. At this point, click. And there's our convert 9918 ready to go. Now, the other thing that we could do here, you'll notice that it spit out two, two program icons right here. One for our convert 9918, which is our main window, but it also made a separate special window just for the console log that it outputs while it's converting information. We really can't do much about this one, but we can keep this one from appearing. 
by taking and changing one thing in the desktop file. <laughs> we'll close this, come back to files, go back to applications, and we will edit. Sure, come on. I think, oh, it's because I'm still open. Okay, there we go. And we will add another line here. Convert 9918.execute. Now, how do I get that right there? That's a special property right there. I got that by running xprop on this window. Let's see. Open the window. And I want to get the WM class. This is the unique identifier for that window. Grab it. Sure. Okay. Great. Sounds good to me. Put it in here, convert 9918, execute. And if we save it, boom, then we update our desktop database. So now that we've done those changes and we've updated the database, when we restart again, we'll see that only the console windows appear, and that's fine. And now it knows that this application has been launched. Okay, so we're good. We now have these applications, and they are ready for, uh, for use in application development. So now not only do we have our text editor for writing code, but we have our, uh, we have our graphics applications for making bitmap images, for uh, doing tile work and for converting existing images from one format back into the format used by the VDP. It gives us the core of what we need. And so I'll end the video here saying, until next time, guys. Have fun.